Hey there, Clarifiles and Clarifilettes. A couple weeks ago, I made a special offer for the holiday on the AGG system, and I also made a vain promise. I said that that week I would also put up another educational video on our video blog here. Well, that didn't happen. Uh, it seems, as Morpheus says, time is always against us, and it was definitely against me until now. And I have a few moments, so I'm going to present to you for your fidelity at watching this blog. Um, really boring story, a really boring story. And I think you'll find it extremely exciting. If you're interested, just keep watching. Okay, here we go, as promised, our boring story. And it's all about clarinet bores. First of all, let's talk about the difference between the French bore of the clarinet and the German bore. Now, the German bore is characterized by an extended central cylinder. By a central cylinder, I mean just a cylinder that runs from the top of the left-hand joint to the bottom of the right-hand joint. Now, the German bore is almost all cylinder with a very small amount at the top of the bore that is actually a reversing cone, but it's very short, maybe not more than one centimeter long into the bore. And the same in the lower part of the right hand, you have a flare going out that's usually not more than one or two centimeters long that flares out to meet the bore of the bell. Otherwise, the German clarinet bore is pretty much cylinder all the way through. This gives the clarinet a lot of stability and a lot of even resistance throughout. It's pretty cool, but there are, you might say, uh, there are compromises that you make and there are trade-offs. And one of them is the extremely complicated fingering system of the German style Euler system clarinet. In contrast, the French clarinet is quite different. Oh, it has a central cylinder, all right, but it starts at the throat A key. And then above the throat A key is quite an extended reversing cone. That is, and so the clarinet at the left hand is larger at the top, and it shrinks down to the throat A key, somewhere around there. And then it continues as a central cylinder, a truly central cylinder, down to about the low A flat pinky key. Now, at the low A flat pinky key, you have quite an extended exponential flare. It's very gradual, much, much longer than the German uh, flare at the end of the right hand joint to finally meet the bell of the clarinet. Well, this gives the French clarinet a lot more flexibility. Uh, it gives it a lot more variability in color but it also requires quite a bit more control to basically contain the pitch color shape envelope. So uh, there's some sacrifice in, uh, in stability in order to achieve uh, agility and flexibility in the French clarinet. So those are the primary differences, bore differences in those clarinets. Now, besides that, there's the question of the central cylinder itself. And for that, we're only going to talk about the French clarinet because that's almost all we play here in America. So this next seg segment, we're going to talk about what large bore and small bore clarinets mean to you that goes beyond what most of you only know as just a number, but has no meaning beyond that. The smaller the bore of the clarinet, the better the tuning ratios between the first mode and second mode, that is between what we call the low register, or the shayumo, and the second register, or the clarion register. Now, there is an extreme, though, that you can go with small bore that actually makes tuning worse. The major effect in tuning of the bores of the clarinets does not come in the second register. The major effect in tuning comes in the low register and especially in the right hand low register. 
Now let me lay out a principle for you, okay? The larger the central cylinder is between the throat A key and the low A flat key, then the sharper the right hand low register tones are going to be in relationship to their second mode corollaries. In other words, say a low A is going to be extremely sharp in relationship to the fourth space clarion E that comes out of the same tone hole. Almost all the right hand tones are going to be quite sharp to the same notes that come out uh, to their twelfths that come out in the second register, but also sharp to the rest of the clarinet. For instance, in a larger bore clarinet, if you tune the clarinet by pulling the barrel so that it's down to 440 and you play a throat A, that throat A is likely to be quite well in tune. But with no changes in everything, if you slur down to a low A, that low A is going to be 20 or more cents sharp to the throat A, and 20 or more cents sharp to almost every other pitch on the clarinet, except some of its adjacent right hand tones. The second register of the clarinet is likely to be quite well in tune, and the third register of the clarinet is likely to be pretty well in tune too, and maybe even some notes that are sharp. Things are quite different with the small bore clarinet. With the small bore clarinet, the, when you reduce the cylinder down to say 14.65 or 14.6, then you'll find that those low register tones in relationship to their second mode corollaries, the, their, their clarion corollaries, you'll find that those low register notes are flat. Well, you know, everyone knows it's better to play sharp than out of tune. So why put up with flat notes down there? Well, the reason you do is because there's a correction for it. You can undercut the tone holes of the right hand, the low A, the B flat, the B natural, and you can slowly bring up and fine tune those twelfths in the right hand without affecting the tuning or harming the tuning in the clarion register. So you can fine tune the low A and the E so that they're beautifully in tune with each other, the low B flat and the clarion F so that it's beautifully in tune. So with undercutting, you can compensate for the flatness that's created by the small bore of, uh, in the right hand of the French clarinet. Well, once you do that, then you have a clarinet that overall plays much better in tune, not just generally in tune, but much better in tune with itself. And that's why clarinet players have generally switched, especially classical players and players that have to play in chamber music groups. The tuning standards today are much stricter than they were in the past, and that's why they have switched to small bore clarinets and they ain't going back because the small bore clarinet really can, is the only clarinet that can really meet the tuning standards that are set today. Years ago, people weren't so, you might say, um, might, weren't so obsessed about the tuning, and part of it was because they really didn't have the information. I'm sure all of you who are my age, and maybe even a little younger, remember that the only way you could check tuning when you were in band as a kid is to go to this huge instrument that you had sitting on a table that took up a whole table and every note had its own little window that was actually difficult to read. There were no chromatic tuners which were about the size of a pack of cigarettes that you could carry around in your pocket. But we have that kind of tuner now, chromatic tuners, digital tuners, that really give us a very quick idea of how well an instrument tunes or how well we can play it in tune. So that's the boring story. So to summarize, when it comes to the French clarinet, we have bores of clarinets that are made, still being made, from 14.6 to about 15 millimeters. A lot of the uh, makers in China now are making 15 millimeter clarinets, and they really are a little bit behind the times in terms of understanding the nature of what they're doing. And therefore, a lot of the clarinets that come from there are really terrible when it comes to tuning. And some large bore clarinets that are still being made and used in the, in the uh, uh, musical education communities in America are still 
uh, large bore clarinets. The band directors really haven't gotten the message either, unfortunately. But um, the clarinet players that are in the know, clarinet teachers that are in the know, and clarinet performers, almost all are playing small bore clarinet. So now it's, it's, it's a really quite a revolution, and it's not going back because small bore clarinets objectively tune better than large bore clarinets, especially the low register right hand is in much, much better relationship with the rest of the horn and their second mode corollaries. So now we can carry around our tuners, which are about the size of a pack of cigarettes. We can carry it in our pocket and pull it out and check chromatic tuning. Uh, this wasn't the case in the past. When I was growing up, you had to check your tuning on a huge machine that sat on a huge table, and you had to check each note individually in its own separate little lit window, which was kind of difficult. Uh, but now our tuning standards are much greater, and so small bore clarinets are hardly a fad that are going away, and the shift is never going back really to large bore clarinets. So that's basically the boring story that really would help you a lot to know in order to choose the right kind of clarinet. Sometimes people will try to sell you an old clarinet that they say, oh, this is a vintage clarinet. It's made of the vintage wood, and it's really that legendary this, that, and the other. The same old blah, blah, baloney that you get all the time about old mouthpieces and, and, uh, uh, and, and old clarinets and all that. Don't sucker for it, because you will get a clarinet. You will not be able to play in tune and play up to the tuning standards that are laid out today. The only different, the only protection you have between this kind of baloney that goes on all the time and being ripped off by something that's inferior that you're paying five, six, seven times more for because you think that it's legendary and it has this special rubber or a special material or, or whatever. The only protection you have is true knowledge. And that's what I want to share with you today. And that's my Christmas present and holiday present to every one of you. And I hope you have a happy new year.